As we are closing in on a final count, we can begin to look toward our next steps. With a margin that small, there will be a recount in Georgia. Interest in our election obviously goes far beyond Georgia's borders. The final tally in Georgia at this point has huge implications for the entire country. The stakes are high and our emotions are high on all sides. We will not let those debates distract us from our work. We will get it right and we'll defend the integrity of our elections. In some states, there are complaints about monitors not being allowed to watch the count. In Georgia, this process is and will remain open and transparent to monitors. If any member of the public raises legitimate concerns, we'll investigate those. We are committed to doing anything and everything to maintaining trust in our elections process for every Georgian, regardless of partisan preference. Thank you very much. Okay, well, there we have it. Uh, 5,500 votes left to be counted. Uh, 8,890 military ballots still to come in. Uh, we heard him there saying, as if we didn't already know, the stakes are high, uh, but also the emotions are very high as well. Um, the, the process uh, is going to be uh, monitored throughout, obviously. Back to Georgia for some more information there. The Secretary just announced a particular set of numbers that actually went down from the time we walked from the door to here. So our new total that we are aware of right now is 4,169, and they are in a handful of counties. I'll go over those now. Um, in Cherokee County, there are 150 ballots that they did not upload, so I had to rescan. They're uploading those today. Um, there's 75 now in Cobb. There's 444 in Floyd. There's approximately 3,500 in Gwinnett as we went through the reconciliation process of what they had already reported versus what they had left to newly scan. And I think that's it. Uh, a couple of things. Lawrence County, the 1,769 votes we had um, yesterday, we were basing those on the absentee ballot differences. And when they looked and did their reconciliation process on it, they discovered that they had accidentally uh, uploaded those into their election day totals. So their totals will not change, but the vote type will change when they make that change today. So outside of that, we don't have any other numbers that we are aware of. But again, I want to remind everybody, we have ballot curing processes through today for absentee ballots, uh, verification uh, process for provisional ballots, and we can still get any military or UACAVA ballots in by close of business today if they were postmarked on Tuesday election day. So there are still an unknowable amount of ballots that would be available to be counted at some point. They are in the hands of the um, uh, elections officials now, other than maybe the military and UACAVA ones. And I can assure you that there are teams of 20-somethings around the state who are Republicans and Democrats finding those people with those absentee ballots to cure. And they're going through that process in county by county, in ones and twos. And just a preemptive question, I know it's going to come up, are we seeing any widespread fraud? Are we seeing anything that makes us question the outcome of the election? We're not seeing any widespread irregularities. We're not seeing anything widespread. We are, we are investigating any credible uh, accusation with any real evidence behind it. But let me tell you one thing. When you have a narrow margin, little small things can make a difference. So everything's going to have to be investigated to protect the integrity of the vote. Our office intends to do that. And like I said, if you get a wide margin, it doesn't matter as much. A narrow margin, it does. We are literally looking at a margin of less than, you know, a large high school. So we understand that in this state. The county officials are aware of that. Our investigators are aware of that. So it's an important thing to protect the integrity of this election from all sides.